Hello there, people are always asking me, what do you do with all the prints that you make? Well, in addition to selling them, I now have a new answer. Let's go. It's an appropriate start to the video because today we're going to be discussing what makes a photograph fine art. We're going to go out and do some landscape photography and I'm hopefully going to come away with a new piece of fine art. Before we get going though, this video is sponsored by Lexar. If you need a high quality, fast and reliable SD card like me, then check out the Lexar Professional 2000X SD card. Right, come with me. So welcome to the amazing east coast of England. One of my favorite places in the whole world. Now, I often think that a lot of people don't think photography is an art, and this is quite understandable because there is documentary photography or photojournalism, and there's also the millions and millions of people every single day who are just uploading images without a second thought to the internet, and we're often plagued by this. Now, I made a video a little while ago where I talked about trying to turn a snapshot into a photograph. And the heart of that video, essentially the message was that I think you can do that just with an intention to make a photograph better. So for example, rather than just shooting straight down at a subject while you're stood up, get down to their level, shift your perspective, and it will instantly be a better photograph. Now, following this mindset along a little bit, if you do that on a consistent basis and you're trying to do better with your photographs, then I think you have every right to call yourself a photographer. That doesn't mean that you're a good one necessarily, but you can call yourself a photographer if you're trying to make photographs. I think we can then follow along the same lines until we get to fine art photography. It's not genre specific, it's not style specific, and I really don't even think it's quality specific. What I think fine art photography is all about, like so much in life, is our intent. What's your intention behind the work that you are trying to create? I think so often with photography education, so much of it is built around getting good with your camera and the technical aspects, and we're missing out on this whole artistic thought process. Some people think it's a bit sort of high level thinking, but I don't. I think we should be thinking about it from day one. To trying right from the start to make a photograph that is more meaningful to us and will resonate with people and ourselves a lot better. If you have a creative vision and you're using photography to express that and then you have an idea that you want to share, a story you want to tell or an emotion that you're trying to evoke, then I undoubtedly think it is fine art photography. Now the word fine would I guess suggest that there's some level of quality there, but that's always going to be subjective and shouldn't put you off in any way. If we're thinking about what makes a photograph fine art photography, then I think we should also consider how the final thing is going to be used, because I think fine art photography is something that's created to be displayed or sold, that physical, tangible piece of artwork, rather than a piece of work that's produced for advertising or commercial purposes. Although there's absolutely no doubt that commercial photography can become fine art photography. So now that I've sort of shared my idea of what I think fine art photography is, let's go and try and make some because I want to leave here today with a photograph that's worthy, something that evokes an emotion in you when you see it and something that's going to be worth printing and displaying on a wall and possibly even selling. Right, so as you can see, I'm now set up to take a shot. And we might ask, is landscape photography fine art? Well, it might not be quite straightforward because I think the answer is yes, but also potentially no, because just rocking up to a place and taking a pretty photograph or doing a long, long exposure like I'm about to do now does not make it fine art. I think we have to go right back to before and consider the line of thinking and that it's all about the intention. 
and there is a reason why long exposure photography is often considered to be fine art because it creates a calming serene feeling and it gives the person doing it and the viewer a sense of escapism in particular at the moment that's something we're often looking for and it just tells a nice story where we slow down the movement and take a minute to breathe and to think and that's all about the shots i'm about to take here i've got these they're called groins in the water these bits of wood sticking out and it's the juxtaposition between them and then the movement of the water that the long exposure will capture that tells this story of serenity these static objects immovable with the water moving around them and it's just perfect weather conditions for it as well got some beautiful clouds a bit of color in there that blue light from above reflecting off the water surface and it's just going to create that mood it's a, i feel calm right now there's not much wind it's peaceful for this composition that i've thought about that i've carefully crafted on the tripod here i've got these groins coming from the sort of bottom right hand corner and they're going towards the middle of the frame it's keeping them below the horizon so that the camera is relatively high on the tripod beautiful clouds and then if we come around to the camera i have a six stop filter on the front so that's going to help me produce this long exposure and it's giving me a shutter speed of about four or five seconds what that is going to do is to introduce that movement into the water which will look great I'm going to hit it just at the point where the tide is washing back out because it leaves streaks of all these bubbles and things that will really create some interest in the foreground to lead us through into this picture and give us that sense of the tide going in and out as well. Because it's not too windy though, there's not going to be any movement in the clouds. The clouds are quite interesting so I'm really happy with that. There's some lovely colour in there, some lovely blue tones, some slightly warmer colours as well. So it's just going to be really, really nice. So I'm focused in on one of the groins. I'm at f11 for second exposure, ISO 100. Focus is locked into manual focus, which I've already done. Just wait for that. No, I've just caught it just a nice time there. Wait for four seconds and then, ah, uh, yeah. I mean, every time a long exposure pops up on the front of the screen, I've said it before. Oh, it's so nice. It's so satisfying. Yes, I think that is fine art photography. Yeah, I really do but it's more about the way I'm thinking about it, the intention behind it, and trying to pass this feeling I'm having right now onto you as the viewer, and I hope I've done that. Like I was saying, it does not have to all be long exposures, and when you're at the beach, it's always worth looking down, and I found this absolutely beautiful rock. I actually found it a few weeks ago in a workshop and wanted to come back and I've got the camera pointing straight downwards. I love the shape, I love the way the tones of the rock go from dark to light, light and it's almost mirroring the beach to the sky. And these little detail shots can be fine art as well, especially if you couple them to a wider vista. I love doing that, I love the, this shape, I love the lines in the rock, the tones, the colour. I think it's gonna be a really, really nice, simple, flat, artistic image. Now this little SD card here, which is made by Lexar, has pretty much until recently recorded every single vlog that's been on this channel about for the last four years. I'm happy to announce that this video is sponsored by Lexar, in particular the Lexar Professional 2000X SD card. Now this is a quality, reliable, fast card. It will suit all of your 4K needs for video and insane burst rates for stills and if you are a discerning photographer you do need a fast card these days and these Lexar 2000X Pro range are excellent. They have read speeds of 300 megabytes a second, write speeds of 260, so you can, it will empty the buffer from your camera quicker. You can then download the images quicker. And if you're on a laptop that's cold and you're outside, that's really important. I've fallen foul of that before, but not any more. So this new card is gonna be recording all the vlogs coming up. Yeah, give Lexar some love for supporting this channel. Hit the link down below. Check out the Lexar Professional 2000X 
SD card. So say if you're not quite sure how to even consider starting to try and tell a story or evoke an emotion, all those things I'm talking about, one great way to do that is to come up with a photography project that you can dive into. Now, the sort of sky's the limit when it comes to photography projects. There are loads out there, some amazing, inspiring things that people are doing, but you can keep it very simple, particularly as a landscape photographer, and just start photographing your local area, your local countryside or town, because who knows that story better than you? And who can tell that story better than you in a visual way? way i think that's a really lovely way just to get going but there's other stuff you can do or you can join the raw room my online learning platform where every month we do a photo project so i just give you a little topic to shoot around and then i do a little critique video and it usually works out very nicely i've done projects before i've got some going on now and it just it keeps you motivated it keeps you pushing and it keeps you thinking most importantly about why you're doing what you're doing once you get that sort of connection between yourself and your work and you build that self-awareness, it's gonna make you happier in life, I think, but it will also make your photographs turn out better, hopefully. Anyway, it doesn't always work out because sometimes you have a nightmare um, and I've had my fair share of the, those things. So even though I might be trying to create fine art photography, I'm certainly not winning at it every single time. And it's important to forgive ourselves and not be too hard on ourselves. If we don't get the shots, move on to the next day and the next day and the next day, keep doing it, enjoy the journey, and eventually you'll start to capture something that you like. One image a month, that's all you need. One image a month. So it's coming around to sunset now and I'm set up for another shot and I've got the camera right down low because this black rock that I'm stood on is just absolutely beautiful. It's picking up all the reflection from the beautiful sky. It's dark, it's got seaweed in it and it's just got a really nice mood. That black foreground to the bright blue sky. I think it's a really nice look and feel. And yes, just take that now because I've got a really nice wave came in there. The rock is so slippery though. So I'm composed with the line of the rock here, kind of drawing us into the image. And I want to use that to give that sense of scale, that sense of perspective, that sense of depth, because we're at the coast, aren't we? So it's always got that feel of an expanse that you could go out there on an adventure. And I love that about the coast. And it gives you that calming feeling that I was talking about before. So I'm trying to bottle that in this picture basically. I've got the clouds cutting across as well, just looking so fantastic. And it's just got such a nice feel to it. And when I do landscape photography, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to capture the emotions I'm feeling now from all parts of my life and the philosophy I have developed over my life and the experiences I've had and using it in this moment, drawing on all of that in this moment to put it in to this picture. So when you look at that picture, hopefully you just get a tiny sense, just a tiny sense of how I was feeling, or it evokes an emotion in you, something that reminds you of either being here or being at the coast or an event in your life that is sparked or the thought is sparked by seeing this image. And that's what I think fine art photography is all about, storytelling evoking emotions and again i hope when you see this picture that you feel i've just even a little bit captured some of that and printing is a big part of it as well i think it becomes that physical piece of art which definitely then gives it more of a fine art feel so i hope you've enjoyed this video and you go out and try and create some fine art photography for yourself it doesn't matter if people like it or not that's not the point it's about you how you feel about your connection between yourself, the camera, and whatever you are trying to capture as your subject. So have a great time. I'll see you on another one very, very soon. Be sure to check out Lexar on that link down below for those really good fast cards. I'll see you again very, very soon.